Good afternoon, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to your fresh new uh, KNH lecture, the first in the HSC series. Uh, today's is going to be the role of marketing uh, and types of markets, so I hope you enjoy. Now, um, the important thing about uh, the marketing topic within the HSC and something that you really need to try and understand in order to get your head around is what a market actually is. So when we talk about advertising to a certain market, so a target market or a niche market, uh, an understanding of what that actually entails. So um, the first slide, as you can see here, that I've put in is that it's trying to work, or, I guess, reclassify that definition within your head of what a market actually is. So, you know, the first thing you think about is obviously it's uh, images of a physical meeting place, um, that we might see on a weekend, so a fruit and vegetable market or such. Um, however, for marketing and business, sorry, for business purposes, this is not what a market is. A market is not a physical representation of something. Uh, it is a grouping of certain people, uh, certain consumers. Now, um, each market, as you can see down here, is broken up and plays a different important role. And most importantly for the value chain, uh, the production for the final product. So we're gonna go through each of the various markets that we'll be uh, talking about and discussing throughout the topic, trying to get an understanding of them uh, and also trying to embed some examples in there of how existing companies try and use these markets to their advantage in order to uh, you know, ideally gain market share. Um, in order to help the clarification of what a market actually is, I've put up here uh, an agreed upon definition uh, that you would also find in your textbook as well. Um, essentially, it's made up of a group of individuals, um, organizations or both that need or want products. So that could either be goods or services, um, have some purchasing power to purchase the product are willing to spend their money to obtain the product and are socially and legally authorized to purchase the product. Now, this last one, for instance, means that a um, you know a tobacco market or an alcohol market it, it needs to be aimed at those people who are legally authorized to buy that. Um, what I've done also is mention the importance of the value chain in this. So you'll see that there's a bit of a flow chart here and it talks about the value chain in all of it and, and how there's an add-on effect throughout. So how you have suppliers who then have the inputs to the business uh, and provide products to the customers. So that's the chain from the start. Uh, and then on the other side you see, so that's the production flows. Then you have the monetary flows where a product price and then you've got your input payments. So at all stages, different businesses will be um, adding their money on or getting their cut or their profit. Um, and this will be passed on to the next in the chain where they then need to add on their own, I guess, commission, you might need to call it, um, to, in order to gain a profit from their undertaking. So each of these will have a different prime function uh, and it just shows the flow throughout an economy of how everyone relies on each other in order to actually uh, conduct business. Um, for the purpose of business studies, we are able to see um, that markets are actually broken up into four different types um, and then also there's a, via one of them there's also two subtypes as well. By doing this we're able to Marketers are able to define where they want to direct their strategies. Uh, it really enables them to try and differentiate between the different people in an economy or the different consumers uh, in order to tailor their, as I said, their marketing strategies so that they're trying to uh, obtain the most from them. Um, it's broken up into a resource market, an industrial market, intermediate market, and then there's the consumer market, which is bro broken up into niche, uh, which is more than likely niche as uh, and the mass market. Now we'll go into each of these in more detail and try and uh, give examples as well how each relates to the other. Now as uh, Albert Einstein once said, uh, there is no source without the resource. So that leads us on to our next, um, our first subtype of market, which is the resource market. And as you can see from the definition here, it's all those groups who are involved in primary production, okay? 
primary production is at the start of that value chain. All right, it, it's those that um, are mostly involved at almost taking it uh, from its original source. So for instance, agriculture. So that might include, as you can see down here, things such as uh, you know, fruits, uh, wheat, rice. Okay, it's the actual taking that from the ground and then giving that or selling that from there. Okay, it's just the raw product. Um, fishing, mining, uh, and forestry. Now, an example of this, uh, you know, a mining company will purchase many items such as uh, machinery, bulldozers, safety equipment. Um, fisheries will have their boats, their nets, um, their licenses from the government. Um, and it uses all these resources to produce other products. Our next market that we need to look at is the industrial market. Now, a, a famous um, lawyer by the name of Edward von Dinkelberry once said that, you know, there is no trial unless there is an industrial. So with that in mind, we now look at the industrial market. Um, the industrial market, as we can see from the definition, is all the individuals or businesses that buy goods and services to make their own products. So they're not buying a finished product, they are actually going to produce their own. Now, um, one example you might want to think of, which is quite easy, is why I've put it here, is the car manufacturing market. Now, Mitsubishi, Ford, Holden, whatever it might be, buys components and parts from different suppliers uh, and then assembles cars and trucks to sell to customers. Okay, so the industrial market is really one of those ones that works at producing something from raw materials in a lot of ways, although that's, it's not always raw, um, but materials into finished products, which uh, can then be on sold from there. Uh, now we go to the intermediate market. Um, the intermediate market is one that buys goods for the purpose uh, of renting or selling them to, mar um, to others. Okay, um, you know, we'll go through this and then I'll give you the example. It's businesses, uh, business that buy goods for the purpose of reselling. Um, you know, Myers or Target uh, is part of the intermediary market because it resells the goods made by other businesses. So you might have, uh, let's go with, you know, Breville or Samsung or something like that, that is making, you know, from the industrial market, they're producing a product and they're making that one, who will then on sell it to the intermediate market. And this is where your, a lot of your shop fronts come into play. Um, and, and they will sell this product from there with obviously their cut on that. So they've got to figure out what their profit margin might be. Um, you can either have you know stores that are maybe quite specific in what they sell um, and you know, the shaver shop, for instance, which, which specializes in male grooming, um, and they on sell those intermediate products. However, then you've got places like Meyer and Target who really cover a lot of generic pieces that can be on sold from, uh, the, from that industrial market there. So wholesalers are also a part of the uh, intermediate market because they're, they're just another, uh, another chain that is on selling from the industrial. Now the consumer markets. Consumer markets first can be given a broad definition and, and then um, can go into our, our niche and our mass market from there. Now, as opposed to con winter, it's actually consumer markets, uh, con summer, something like that. Uh, so consumer markets are individuals and households who buy goods for personal use and do not intend to resell them. So that's the important point just there. Um, these are the markets that we'll be studying the most in this course. That is where most of us belong uh, as consumers is in this market here. Um, as a general rule, you don't intend to resell products that you buy um, or make other products from them. Okay, as a general rule. Now, items that people in the consumer market would buy include CDs, food, clothing, cars, uh, and personal services. So as you can see here, someone's getting a massage, that's a personal service. You've got your car here, um, this is your Audi R8, 
Now, um, I bought one of these last year. However, I don't like to bring it out because, um, you know, I, I tend to drive too fast in it. So I tend to keep that one in the garage. But from there, you've also got your general grocers as well. So um, your milk, your eggs and your bread, um, which drags us into then our, our subculture. Oh, sorry, our, our sub markets from this, which you should all be quite aware of by now, including the mass market. Now, the mass market is the general market that has not been differentiated and to which a business aims to sell a lot of one particular product. Differentiated means that essentially they think that they can sell that to most people, okay? It is not meant for a small amount of the population. It doesn't need to be changed much. It can be a product that is um, made in the industrial um, section. So the industrial market might make a phone, for instance, like Apple. And then that's released on mass. It's not differentiated. So you can have a, a 15 year old kid that buys that and an 80 year old that buys the, exactly the same product. It doesn't need to be differentiated between the two. Um, so the general market is a, a, sorry, mass market's the general market, which is a business uh, produces, distributes and promotes a large amount of one product, okay? Uh, all customers are seen as being the same and a key example and the biggest possible example, probably this is Coca-Cola. Um, it produces only one type of soft drink, Coke, okay? Although the, the Coca-Cola company now is massive and they produce a ton of different things, but it started out as being just Coca-Cola, um, hoping it would appeal to the wider audience. And then the idea in that is that mass marketing, uh, it, it, that it should lead to the lowest costs, creates low prices, largest potential market. However, not all products are suited to being in the mass market because they are more specialized. Now, specialized products really belong in this niche market. Um, it's a small market segment identified as not being catered for by other businesses. So I, I, I'd like the other word that you really try and use is specialized. So it's a specialized market. Um, in relation to profits and promotion, a niche marketer produces specialized goods and services that only a few people are interested in or can afford. Now, as an example of this one, I've done uh, Beats by Dre. Um, they're considered a niche marketer. It, it only caters to people who want high quality head, headphones at a high price. All right, it's not catering for everybody. And they specialize this with things such as uh, solo, um, then you've got your in-ear ones, uh, you've got your studio, I can't even remember what the other ones are, but um, they're specializing that for a small market. Uh, Culture Kings is an example of a store that sells niche products. So they're targeted at young urban um, people who are interested in uh, culture, um, the urban culture there. So whether that be um, snapback hats, um, shoes that are quite specialized, um, you know, watches, okay, that might be worn by, you know, that, that particular urban group. Um, and they tend to be more expensive because they have fewer buyers. Uh, and the marketing strategies also have to be a lot more, uh, designed a lot more around reaching that specific group that you're trying to sell to. You can't just put a product in general advertising into the mass market with people thinking that you're going to understand it. You need to target that market in so that it reaches those consumers that want to buy this product, okay? Um, so you're not gonna have Beats by Dre in a random, uh, I don't know, catalog by Woolworths or something like that. Um, anyway, that, that's a brief outline of the different types of markets with a couple of, um, uh, examples in there. We will be going through each of these markets in a lot more detail throughout the course and it will suffice just to have a basic understanding of these and, uh, and a knowledge of almost how you can categorize different consumers. So as always, K-Niche out. I hope you enjoy uh, and I will see you next lesson. Goodbye. Peace out.